May 29th, 1895.05. Dear Diary, I'm responsible. It's my fault. Albert, my little brother, wanted me to go play with him on the beach close to the house. My parents were busy inside. The wind was howling and the St. Lawrence was rolly. Still, I let him play on the slippery rocks. I saw my brother going further away. I didn't have time to tell him to come back. A wave had taken him away. His scream was so loud that my parents ran out of the house. We realized just a few seconds later that only three of us were left. I had never seen them that enraged. They were so mad that they locked me up in the bathroom. The only things I can hear now are the sounds of the dripping water pipe and the still sounding echo of his last scream. June 2nd, 1895. Laying with my back against the tub, I'm writing under the subtle light of a candle. I'm unable to sleep and I'm wondering what he has become and what he looks like now. I need answers to these questions and I'm willing to do everything to get them. August 10th, 1913. My plan is taking shape. This morning, I received a letter confirming that I will be captain of the Storstad on May 29th, 1914 exactly 19 years after my brother's death. Here are the last modifications concerning my plan. Researching the phenomenon of drowning, done. Getting my captain's license, done. Getting aboard the Storstad and entering a collision course with the Oppress of Ireland, to be done. Analyzing the corpses on Point O'Paris beaches, to be done. Sooner this morning, the first that hit the Empress of Ireland close of Rimouski. Almost all of the passengers died into the cold water. May 30th, 1914. The first corpses arrive on the beach today. In a couple of days, I will be able to start analyzing them. And I will finally know what happened to my little brother. June 7th, 1914. I was studying the grayish and bloated skin of one of my victims when they took me. They brought me here by force. I immediately knew where we were. That's well, Psychiatric Institute. My room here reminds me of the painful days of my childhood I spent locked in the bathroom. They took everything. They even confiscated my captain's uniform. I'm lucky they let me keep my diary because my study has just started. Who's next? Accueillez l'équipe composée de Béatrice Gélina, Anne-Sophie Hamel, Rebecca Ice, Charlie Tousignan, Marie-Lise Saint-Pierre et, dans le rôle de Jen Anderson, Justine Morin. Did you see that? Yes, yes, I saw it. Good, good, good. I missed it, though. I didn't get it on camera. Just making sure. There's video. I missed it. Great work, Eric. Yes. We wanna... What the heck? <laughs>
That was the coolest story ever. I loved that. I had I, so this is the first time we're watching the stories, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so we've seen the characters come to life technically, but we don't know the backstory. No. So we don't know a lot about the decisions that were made as far as prosthetics. Clearly, a lot of the students during the week were stubborn about some things they wanted to keep, and now I know why. Yeah, this is and impressive. I'm so happy y'all fought for the things that you fought for. Firstly, that story was incredible. Like. That could be a movie. I'm so happy about that story, and I just didn't want it to end. I wanted to watch that for like an hour and a half, so fantastic job. Everyone wrote that story together? Very, very, very cool. Um, so in terms of storytelling, that story is told through this character, which, again, very important part of all the face-offs that we do at SSM. Uh, make sure that a story is told through the character, and now that I know the background, that is the story that takes place on your, on your character, and it is fantastic. Love the, the drowned look of her, the really pale drowned look. Clearly, she spat up seawater, so she's been down there for some time. Uh, the tragic idea that she's in there to look for her brother is, I didn't know that. I just think that is the coolest, coolest thing. Um, the sand, the little details of, mm. like, you know, the beach, her last moments. The date that's inscribed on her arm that she carved in there. Now all the dates make sense. I love it. I just, I, I, yeah. All right, I don't want to take up too much time, and I want RJ to say something. So I'm very excited. I'm going to translate real, real fast. Okay. Because, okay. Euh, les gars n'avaient pas vu les vidéos. Ils savaient un petit peu c'était quoi les, les, les histoires, mais pas tant. Donc là, ce soir, ils découvrent les vidéos en même temps que vous. Et euh, Eric, je pense qu'il a, a, a trouvé que c'était une histoire extraordinaire qui valait quasiment le goût d'être un film. Et euh, tous les détails prennent vie. Euh, je ne sais pas si vous remarquez, sur le bras, il y a la date de, de graver sur le bras de... De, 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 la, de Jane. C'est ça. Donc, euh, c'est un personnage complet qui raconte une histoire et on, on dit souvent l'histoire est super importante quand on fait un, un personnage et là, on en a la, la preuve euh, vivante. RJ! I, um, this could be on actual face-off and probably go home a winner. Yeah, totally. I don't think, yeah, yeah. for real. Uh, well the done. detail in the paint here and the little like the little bit of sand, like you said, this is the fine details. These are the things that people always overlook that don't, you know, you think, well, you know, it's not going to be seen. I love the fact that it's like a, you know, an homage to, a, oh, I said something in French. Um, <laughs> it's an homage to, um, <laughs> to like, a, uh, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean with the, uh, mm -hmm. the starfish. I love that the starfish is like embedded in her leg and all the little coral pieces. This is, this is another thing that presented itself to you guys. Today, you had additionally, uh, uh, originally sculpted this piece, and I know this to be true because we were talking about it. This piece was supposed to go on the head, but when it didn't work with both of those uh, items there, they decided to move it to the chest, and I think that was a happy accident for you guys because this works much better here yeah. than it ever would have on the face. Totally. The other thing about it is is that this shows ingenuity and uh, the stick to and the fact that you have to think quickly on your feet when you do this kind of work because you never know what's going to happen on set. That's right. The, the date is incredible. I love the... It's, it's wonderful. You, I, this guy is it's just amazing. This is really... I, I could not have expected anything like I know. this. No, it makes me so excited. It's really <laughs> incredible. The fact also, too, I want to say one more thing, is the fact that there's not... Notice there's not heavy prosthetics right. on the face. Yep. It, it just, a, a completed character doesn't always have to have the, uh, you know, a mask on your face. In fact, this is to me a true effects makeup because it does have to blend back into the real actor, the human, and uh, that is where the portrayal of the character comes to life. So yeah, Good. awesome guys. I'm just so impressed. Um, donc, le, le, je vais expliquer un petit peu. La prothèse était censée aller well, au visage. La prothèse, qu que, la prothèse, oui, prothèse. Amazing. La prothèse qu que, que, que Justine porte ici était censée être euh, sur le visage, puis finalement les filles ont comme plan B, euh, ça fit pas, puis et c'est ça qui arrive souvent dans Face Off. Il euh, faut se revirer de bord, il faut penser autrement. Et vous l'avez fait de manière euh, vraiment cool. De, vous n'avez pas paniqué, vous avez dit « là, on va réfléchir autrement ». Puis euh, vous avez fait un, un personnage extraordinaire avec le, le, le sable, le, les algues, les coquillages. Les détails sont là. Mm -hmm. euh, vraiment une belle histoire, un beau personnage. Bravo, bravo, bravo. bravo. Uh, maybe someday they will let me work for them when on a movie or something. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Okay. I'm going to hold you to that. Good. Amazing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 